for all current assets. So, uh, as you can see, uh, there are five important accounts when you say current asset. Okay? So, we have cash. We have accounts receivable. We have marketable securities. We have merchandise inventory. And the last one is the prepaid expenses or prepayments. So, what are the difference between those accounts? So, first thing first, current assets are uh, original entry are all debits. So, when, for example, when you when you want to have a capital as part of your business or you want to start a business, you debit cash, credit capital. So, as you can see, cash is, original entry is a debit side. And then, when we say accounts receivable, uh, it is the thing that we, we already sell but uh, we have not yet collected. So, when we sell those items, we debit accounts receivable and then credit seeds. And then, upon collection, we just, uh, because we already have a collection, we debit cash and then credit accounts receivable. But, when uh, when we are talking about the original entry, always the original entry of accounts receivable is a debit side. Okay? So, when you say marketable securities, uh, they are those cash. Uh, you have an extra cash and you want it to deposit for a certain amount of interest at a later time. So, we need to say, uh, after three months, you can uh, get the marketable securities together with the interest income that you that you have between the bank and you. Okay? So, this, uh, these marketable securities are also considered as cash. Okay? And then, we have the merchandise inventory. So, when you say merchandise inventory, uh, it is uh, readily available... Um, goods for sale, but it is not yet sell. Meaning to say that it is uh, it is on the warehouse, and um, uh, they are waiting for the items to sell. So this merchandise inventory is also considered as current asset. Okay, and then uh, so if you uh, if you enter the merchandise inventory. You debit the merchandise inventory and then you credit what? Cost of goods sold. Okay? And then prepaid expense or prepayments. So prepaid expense or prepayments, uh, they are those expenses but not yet used. So we we uh, it is it is part of asset because it is not yet used. For example, we pay rent in advance for one year. So, it is considered an asset because it is not yet used. But upon the usage of it, for example, uh, we already used the, the two months rent. So, we debit, we debit rent expense and then cre credit prepaid expense. But, the original entry of prepaid expense is debit prepaid expense and then credit, credit what? Credit cash because we already paid for it. But, after using it, we, we, we credit the prepaid expense and then we debit rent expense. As so as same uh, uh, when we are using the office supplies. For example, uh, we purchase uh, at least ten thousand worth of office supplies. So we record it as part of debit. So we debit uh, office supplies and then we credit it cash. So upon usage of it, we debit office supplies expense and then we credit office supplies. Okay, so did you understand now? Again, when you say current asset, they are revolving within one year. So that's why it's called current asset. So just to um, to top it all, when you say current asset, current asset are all part of debit side, and they are part of asset. So these current asset are part of asset together with the um, non-current asset and then the intangible asset. Okay, so let's start with the cash component. So we have the cash in bank, cash on hand, and petty cash fund. So what are the difference between the three? So when we are talking about cash in bank, it is when we are purchasing or paying something or we receiving something. Uh, if the amount is 1000 or more, so we need to use a checking account. Okay, so it should be recorded under cash in bank. So, example, we want to purchase an equipment, so we debit office equipment or machineries, debit, and then credit cash in bank. 
So, amount is 265,000. So, we debit equipment, 265,000 credit cash in bank. Why? So, supposedly, we cannot we cannot even pay or purchase something uh, when the amount is already 1,000 or more, we use cash in bank. Okay? So, cash on hand. So, what are the differences between the two? Cash on hand are those account or are those cash that are not yet deposited. Okay? So, when when you collect something, when you collect a cash, whether it is a, a cash or a check checking account, uh, it is not considered as cash in bank uh, as long as it is not yet deposited. Okay? So, if the, if the money or if the cash is in your pocket, uh, I mean in the office pocket, yet, uh, it should be deposited before 2 p.m. So, if it is deposited after, uh, before, uh, before 2 p.m., it is now considered as cash in bank. Okay? So, but if the cash is is with you in the morning till 2 p.m. and it is not yet deposited, it is considered as cash on hand. Okay? Okay. So, number three is what we called as the petty cash fund. So, what are the difference between uh, the three? From the word petty. Petty means minimal or small. So, at actually, uh, we, we, we put uh, a certain account or for a certain fund, for a petty cash fund, uh, if you want to pay uh, a small amount, for example, you want to notary a certain document worth 50 pesos. So, are you going to put a check for it? So, it's not yet. So, you need to, to put a certain fund, which is called a petty cash fund. So, this fund are considered as petty cash fund when you open at least 10,000 to 50,000. So it is depend upon the uh, the the companies uh, the company if it is big or small company if it is small company you can already open an a petty cash fund worth ten thousand but if it is a big company because of a certain there's disbursement late daily you need to open at least fifty fifty k or fifty thousand okay so th these are the difference between the Certain cash, we have the cash in bank, so it can be a deposit, uh, it can be a savings account, a checking account, or a time deposit account. So cash on hand, so it is the money that that you have and not yet deposited. And petty cash fund is a certain fund or a small or minimal fund that you considered as petty cash fund, uh, so as to purchase uh, a minimal amount of disbursement on a daily basis. So, what is accounts receivable? Actually, when you say accounts receivable, uh, it is a, um, uh, it, uh, you already sell it, but you, you, you are not yet collecting it. So, so, you just wait for 30 days to collect so that uh, this accounts receivable will, be, uh, will become cash. So, how you will do it? First thing, uh, when you record the accounts receivable, you, get, uh, you, you debit accounts receivable, and then credit sales. Okay, so you, you already have sales, but it is not yet collected. So after 30 days of collection, you already have what? So you record now this accounts receivable as part of credit side. So the the recording now or the entry now will be debit cash and then credit the accounts receivable to make it zero. Okay, so is it okay now? Okay. So, what about when we say allowance for doubtful account? So, allowance for doubtful account is a contra account of accounts receivable. When we say contra, it is not part of account but it is considered as contra, contra account of accounts receivable because uh, we are considering that not 100% can be collected to a certain customer. So, we put at least a percentage of allowance or allowance for doubtful account, we put a certain percentage, which is 3%. Uh, it, is, uh, it is viable when recording the accounts receivable. Okay? So, how you will record the allowance for doubtful account? So, uh, expect that we are not yet, um, 
received the 3% uh, allowance for doubtful account. So, we record debit, uh, uh, doubtful accounts expense, which is part of expense, and then credit allowance for doubtful account. Okay? So, at the end of the year, if just in case, just in case you cannot collect these items, at least you have a certain portion of allowance for doubtful account. And at the end of the year, we we need to have at least a net accounts receivable. Okay, for example, it is the end of the period and you still have the accounts receivable. You record now accounts receivable beginning. So, for example, you have an account plus the allowance for doubtful account that you have that you already recorded on your um, on your journal. For example, this one you deduct it to allowance uh, accounts receivable beginning, and what you will see on the balance sheet will be the accounts receivable end. Anyway, we will discuss it further when we are discussing the. Uh, further analysis on accounts receivable. This one is only uh, an additional or an, an extra knowledge for you so that uh, you will know how accounts receivable uh, works for the current asset. Okay, number two is uh, when we considered also accounts receivable and we are dealing with the aging of accounts. For example, uh, you already have a certain customer, so you have customer A up to Z. So, there are many customers, but still, uh, you, you, you didn't collect it on time. So, if, just, just uh, in case it happened, uh, there is a certain uh, aging of accounts that we considered in recording an accounts receivable for a certain customer per customer basis. So, again, uh, when we say aging of account, uh, it affects or it affects the amount of accounts receivable where customers are nowhere to be found. So, actually, it happens. So, just remember that when you are a seller or when you are an investor or the owner of the company, you still, uh, you should consider that not all 100% customer can be collected your account or can be, uh, will be your customer forever. So, if just in case, in accounting portion, we considered the aging of accounts and the allowance for doubtful accounts under accounts receivable. Okay, so this time we are dealing with the marketable securities. Actually, when you say marketable securities, it is also a part of your cash. But because you have plenty amount of money or an extra money, you, you decided to deposit it on the other bank to earn at least an interest income at the end of 90 days. Okay, so supposedly, here in our example, supposedly that we need to deposit uh, our money to BPI Bank. So, uh, debit cash and bank, BPI 300,000, and credit cash and bank, which is your bank, BDO 300,000. So, after 90 days, so after having a 90 days period, we need to withdraw now the, your money or the marketable securities that you have. So, we need to debit the cash and bank BDO 350,000. So, there's in, uh, there is an additional. So, instead of 300,000, we have an additional 50,000. So, this additional is called as interest income. So, we debit cash and bank BDO 350,000 and we credit the cash and bank BPI 300,000. Meaning to say, we, uh, we will withdraw all of the 300,000 after the 90 days for you. So, the remaining amount or the extra amount that we have is what we call as interest income, which is 50,000. Okay. So, this one is easy, right? So, I hope you understand this portion and this marketable securities is also part of our current asset. Okay. So, merchandise inventory is also part of current asset. So, when you see merchandise inventory, they are those goods or products that are already finished but not yet sell. So, they are on the warehouse and needs to be sell at a certain point of time. So, there are two types wherein uh, we need to see the merchandise inventory. The merchandise inventory and we need to see uh, the one that is not yet sell 
should be part of the balance sheet. And uh, merchandise inventory should also be seen as part of cost of goods sold. We have here uh, under cost of goods sold, uh, in order to prepare the merchandise inventory, we have the, the purchases, the, the beginning inventory should be added, and then we need to deduct the ending inventory. So the ending invent the portion of the ending e inventory under cost of goods sold should be part of under balance sheet or it, it is also on the current asset account because those items are products that are not yet set and should be part of the current asset okay so actually we're going to further uh, discuss this one when we start to to introduce the the different merchandise inventory under periodic and perpetual inventory when we say pre Pay, prepay. From the word prepay, it is an expense but not yet used. That's why it is part of our asset. So upon the usage of it, a part of it will become now an expense. So for example, uh, you purchase a certain amount of office supplies for ten thousand. So you already use it. I think it's not yet because it's ten thousand. You cannot use it for one day. That's why it is part of the asset or part of current asset so we debit uh, upon purchasing we debit office supplies and then credit cash right so after one month this 10,000 uh, you already use uh, the uh, the supplies worth 1,000 so what are you going to do in order to adjust the correct uh, allocation of your uh, prepaid supplies so, what you need to do is to record the amount of 1,000, so debit, office supplies, expense, so you, you need to put an expense at the end. So, debit, office supplies, expense, 1,000, credit, prepaid, uh, office supplies, or office supplies. Okay? Okay, number two example. Uh, you pay 10 months uh, rent, rental for the warehouse for 10,000. Okay? So, for this day, for example, this June, uh, you record the rental worth 10000 So, what are you going to do? Because you already paid for it, you, you debit prepaid rent 10000 credit cash 10000 So, after the deliberation of the adjustment at the end of the year, so December. So, from June to December, how many months? Seven months, right? Because... June, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So, it's seven months. So, what will be the entry now to adjust the correct prepaid rent? So, you debit from the seven months. Seven months is seven times 1,000, right? So, you debit, uh, debit rent expense 7,000, credit prepaid rent 7,000. So, at the beginning of the year, on 2021, your prepaid rent will now become 3000 only because it is already adjusted. Okay? So, I hope uh, my sample is already enough for you to understand the current asset portion of the asset account. 